The following program was produced by an independent community producer. The opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the ECAT staff or board of directors. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Topic Time with Harrison Young. Uh, I cannot believe it, but we are just about halfway through the month of January already. We're, uh, we're already whipping right through 2024, and I've already had, this is already my sixth show of the year, uh, and the shows are going great. Well, maybe it's my fourth show, but either way, we're moving right along. We have an awesome show tonight to Staten Island. Never done it. Staten Island, New York. I've never done a show there, but like I told my uh, guest over there, my uh, my my fame, uh, f fame, uh, uh, Hot throb from Staten Island, although I don't know if a woman could be called a hot throb, would be uh, <laughs> singer-songwriter singer Christina Aguilera, who still looks pretty hot at 43, was born there on Thursday, December 18th, 1980, and I remember the day very well. So uh, that's kind of thing worth mentioning. But before we get to him, got to read these incredible underwriters, and then we will commence per usual. So we have the McGee Annex, uh, used cars in Rockland. Don't get abused. Shop Kevin McGee used for a story. Go to the library for wholesale prices. Call Kevin McGee. We have Personal Best Karate right here in Easton, and, and that McGee Annex is in Rockland. Like I said, Personal Best Karate is in Easton, Southeastern. We have Frenette and Associates PC Attorneys in Brockton. We have Uplifted Nutrition in Taunton. Great to have them back. We have the Barber Shop in Whitman. Debbie does a great job. You drive around Route 27 South, and she's to the left, past the center of Whitman. We have Go Gas Premier Farms in Brockton. We have Go Smoke Shop in Brockton. We have Go Liquor in Brockton. Um, Go Liquor is run by the same people as those other stores, and they sell only the finest spirits, and they've been in business for a month. We have Hanover House of Pizza in Hanover, makers of great Sicilian pizza, Greek salads, and uh, they deliver and have lots of people working there. We have Lynch's Towing Auto Cycle and Truck Center in Brockton, one number for towing, one number for projects. My pal Lynch is always looking for scrap metal wheels and even to do with transportation. He does it all in Brockton. We have One Good Credit in Brockton. We have Eli's Auto Care in Taunton. We have Diesel Plus Unlimited in Whitman. We have A1's Tire and Auto Center in Brockton, always in church of new service writers and tax. And even if you don't know how to do it, send someone by that does. We have Stevie's Pizza in Plymouth. We have the Gunrunner LLC, the Second Amendment Freedom Store in Middleborough. We have the Rug, Rug Resort in Northeastern, cleaning today for healthier tomorrow. We have Doggy Boutique, all breed professional grooming for dogs and cats, run by my great next-door neighbor, Debbie Siddell in Brockton. We have Grant's Rental in Bridgewater. We have Easton Fitness in the Village Shops in Northeastern. We have IW Carpet and Flooring in Norton Covering Floors for 50 years. And we have Joe's Diner in Taunton. I want to thank you guys very much. And now, Kenneth Pogue, he's a musician. You can see he's got a cool guitar, or a couple of them hanging on the wall behind him. And... Uh, how you doing? Great to have you on the show tonight. You're a very colorful dude. We had a great conversation before, and we're going to cover a lot of stuff tonight. Right. Uh, I'm good. Uh, how's your cold feeling? It's a lot better. I feel. I mean. I. I mean. I. I'm telling you, I've defied death so many times, and I. And I don't know about okay. the cold, but you got to figure these cold germs. They want to. They want to take us down, and they. They couldn't do it to me. I had my remedies. I, I had my Vicks. I had my Vicks stick. I had my. Uh, I, I had my, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the vaporizer that I use uh, that uh -huh. I got at CVS with the menthol pads. And I have these honey, honey and lozenges I've been taking, but now I haven't, I haven't needed anything for a while. I feel clear as a bell right now. And I know that uh, sometimes, you know, people, pe there's a lot of, at my age especially, there's recommendations to get vaccinated for other things aside from COVID, like steptocoptical pneumonia, I think it's called. But I don't, you know, and I have asthma and I have a heart condition, but I feel great. The heart condition is yeah. negligible, by the way. So, but we're all, we listen. Something's going to take us all down at some point, so we can't worry about it. But yeah, uh, we're all going to die sometime. Yeah, but, but not before I do something really great, and we're doing it right now, my friend. Fuck well, yeah. So, so now we're going to tell tell me about you, Kenneth. What do you uh, tell me about you? You know, what do you aspire to? How did you get into music? What else do you do? And you know, starting from childhood, well, work on that. And, well, uh, oh, where yeah. it started. Where it started would be when I was six years old. You know, my uh, my grandpa was uh, he was a, a musician. You know, he, he wasn't like uh, famous or anything, but uh, they always played music on my mom's side of the family. OK, so when I was six years old, they bought me a guitar, like a three quarter size acoustic guitar, you know, a smaller one. OK. And then, of course, I, I was a big time wuss. And I was like, ah, it hurts my fingers. Ah, so then I, didn't I, they give I, you a pick? I, didn't they teach you how to use a pick? Because that that saves you. That well, saves no, a lot of but, but you, you still need some fingers to play it. Like, yeah, I guess you do. Pick. 
but you need the other hand, you know. You need that's true. Left hand. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Okay. But uh, so then uh, we moved away, and then uh, we moved. Well, hold back up, hold there. up, hold up. Moved away from where? Where, where? where were you? Where were you born? And where did you spend your younger years? St- Staten oh, okay. Island. Oh, this was uh, Denver, Colorado. Denver, got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So then we moved away from my grandma's house uh, for, and, and then we moved back when I was twelve years old, uh, six years later, you know. And then okay. uh, I didn't have any friends. So I, I was bored, and then I, I went downstairs and I asked my grandpa because at that at that point in time my grandpa was pretty sick. He couldn't uh, he couldn't really do a whole lot. So, but he had all these music books. So I just went down there and I asked him. I was like, uh, "You got a book that I could uh, learn from?" And sure enough, he he gave me a book, and then it was uh, I just I, it was off to the races from there, man. Okay, well, so I guess it was a music book with instruction on how to how to play the guitar without uh, ru- ruining your fingers, right? Yeah, like what what notes are which, and like yeah, all of that stuff. Yeah, be, be, a very beginner book, and then after that, it was just uh, I just, I couldn't stop. I was addicted. Sweet. Okay. Well, you know, it's interesting. My our lives kind of parallel because when I I would started taking piano lessons at six, and and I was pretty good. I thought a lot of the people in my family and friends thought I was very talented. Um, because I could memorize sheet music and play a song from heart and everything. And then somebody got me a guitar, and my parents still have it at their house now, all of these decades, that's over, it's almost 60 years later. Wow. And, uh, and I, but I never, I, I mean, they, it seemed like the guitar would have been an easier instrument to take up than the piano, because if you, yeah. you can get away with making a wrong note on a guitar every now and then, with a, whereas with a piano, you can't. You know, if you screw it up nope. once, it's long, it's gone forever. So... It's eventually I gave up piano lessons. I really I love music, but I could never really th- I thought about making a career out of it because of all the of, of the uh, the possibilities of screwing up, which I which were, for me were pretty large when it came to making <laughs> good, good notes all the time. So I so now I mean right. I have it in my history, and I'm glad I did it. Um, and uh, and I always appreciate great music. And I, of course, as you know, I have plenty of great musical guests on my show. All right, so this was so when you started doing this, playing the, your music book, playing songs from that and learning, how would did you take it from there? Did you get a new band or anything like that, or did you get gigs? Yeah, actually, uh, let me turn back a page real quick. I, I, I did jot down some notes so I could keep my mind in uh, focus here. Good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to be a little more professional these days. I understand. So, uh, yeah, I was 12 years old then, and so... Around, uh, I guess, I want to say 13, I, I met my friend Garrett, who his uh, his dad owned a print shop, and then uh, he had a drum set set up in the back of the print shop. Okay. So then we actually started, that was actually, because I had completely forgotten about this until I was jogging my brain before I came on with you. Okay. And uh, that was my first experience of actually joining a band was it him. It was just me and him playing drums and guitar in the back of a print shop. And it was so loud because, it, you know, it was like a warehouse. You know? Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of echo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And we, we learned that was where we learned uh, to play Smoke on the Water. That was well, one you, of the first songs. Everybody has to learn together. that one. That's that's a classic, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that's the first riff you ever learn. Yep. Okay. And the the guy that taught me the guitar riff for that song was actually a bassist, which I mean, it's the same for everything. But of course, I later on learned how to actually play it on guitar. Okay. Yeah, that's right. A bass guitar is different than a regular, than an acoustic guitar, right? That's where I, that's yeah, right here. Yeah, but the bass follows the root notes, so it's the same basic idea. But you're a drummer too, right? I play drums as well. Like I, when I was 14 years old, I got drums for my birthday. Okay. And that's when everything really picked up. Like, this is actually a good point to jump ahead in the story, actually. Okay. Um, once I got the drums, then uh, my grandma, God bless her, she uh, she heard across the street one day that uh, there was people playing music across the street. And it was my good buddy, John, and his, uh, his uh, cousin, Rob. Okay. And she told me, she's like, you, you got to go over there and you got to introduce yourselves. They're playing music over there. Like, you could play music with them. And I was always very shy. So I was like, yeah, I don't know, maybe. But then, but then I did one day. I went over and I knocked on the door. I was like, hey, what, what, what's going on down there? I hear some awesome drums. And uh, that's when 
everything really came together and then that's when i found my 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 best friend for life and my drummer okay your best friend for life what you, well wait a minute are you talking about some another person or are you talking about your drum being the best friend and the person i, I no, have to no no the, the 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 guy playing the drums yeah, oh okay yeah. i understand okay so so yeah. this so now now uh, mounding from this did you create a did you guys found the band from that or what eventually we did. okay we did um i mean i've i've as a teenager i had various bands like you know you you have you have various things going on but uh when i met john it was i've never had chemistry with another drummer like i had with him okay it was absolutely incredible and him and i we tried so hard to get this band off off the ground and okay. it, it was like every step of the way like the members that we brought in like w there was a couple of members that they were a uh, boyfriend and girlfriend um the vocalist was the girlfriend and the bassist was the boyfriend and they were amazing they were a perfect fit for the band okay now no, all right, let's let's go for the timeline now how old were you when this was going on you were like a teenager then yeah, like I, I'm jumping ahead a little bit in the timeline because I know you like to keep things around 30 minutes. Well, that's that's the way that's the length of the show, but we want to make sure we cover yeah. everything. So, so what? Well, so, that's what I'm trying to help you do too is also cover everything. Okay, all right. Well, so well, how old were you then? So here we were like uh, 19. I want okay, to you say. were still past high school then. Okay, all right. This yeah, was, yeah. Now was this still in Denver? Yes, this was in Denver. Okay. All right, so, so we had so we had this couple in our band for a while and then we we it really started coming together and then we we actually went to a uh it was called the 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 uh pinnacle i believe it was called it was kind of like a community center and then there was this show going on but then we all just showed up and then we did it DRI style. Like anybody who knows DRI, they know that they'll show up to a show and they'll just use other people's equipment. So we did it that way. What exactly is DRI? Hold up a second. What is DRI? What does that stand for? DRI is an old school hardcore band from like the, the, the mid to late 80s. It, it stands for Dirty Rotten Imbeciles. Oh, okay. Punk rock maybe? Yeah, yeah, it, you could consider it punk rock, but it was it was hardcore. Okay, I'm glad you. T I'm glad I asked because I never would. I never heard of them, but I like the name. Yeah, okay. yeah, and, and I like their style too. But uh, we basically did that. We showed up and we're like, "Hey, let us play a song." So we go up there and we use everybody else's equipment and we just rock it, and then we just leave. All right. So we're, this but, was yeah. Okay. Okay, but the 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 problem I had that night was our bassist he when we were leaving he was trying he wanted to start a fight with everybody i was like that's not what this is about man like wow you mean everybody you wait a minute hold up hold up he wanted to start a fight with everybody in the band or other people at the club just a no, club. other people just other people at the place wow mm, that's uh yeah what, what finally happened uh, with that uh well i they ended up breaking up thank god so then we could get rid of both of them and then uh John and I, we we started just writing a bunch of our own songs, like just me doing guitars and vocals, and then him doing drums. We just okay. started doing it by ourselves. Okay, so basically after that, you moved on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were a duo. So did you have a name for the for the duo? I'm I'm so glad you asked that. Me you, too. You are good. You thank are you. Good. I argue if I could. Well, yeah. What was the name? Um. So. We were trying to find other members after that when we were just doing it by ourselves, and uh, we came up with the band name Hope's Last Stand. Okay, sounds good. Because we felt like it was the band's last hope to actually make some progress. Okay, all right. Well, you know, in a way that you know that's kind of philosophical. It attaches itself well to the to the situation, and that's a that's a great name for a band in that in that situation. Yeah. Well, so so what, what finally happened with is, is it still is, are you guys still a team today or a duo nope okay all right it well it didn't last long after that <laughs> oh, well okay so basically it was prophetic as well as uh as well as uh, good not you know uh, accurate state stating of of your situation um all right yeah. well what did you do after that music wise uh 
after that, like it was uh, some years later. Um, I but I went solo. I did my own thing. I I performed under the name uh, Dylan Thomas Reynolds. Okay. And uh, I did my solo thing. It was kind of like a Bob Dylan protest music type thing. Okay. Pro what were you protesting? Um, can, the war? Uh, I mean, what? Well, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Is this on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> well, what's, why aren't you allowed to say? Yeah, I don't know. I, the government tells me apparently what I'm allowed to say. <laughs> Not this, no, in the United States, well, you can't yell sh fire in a, in a crowded theater, but other than that, yeah. or, thre or threaten people, but beyond that, you find that, say, what you, if, when it comes to well, what you protested, I mean, if you I mean, if you feel uncomfortable talking about it, that's fine, you don't have to, but I'm, I'm not, it's up it, to you. It depends on if you're uncomfortable. I'm not um, uncomfortable, I'd love to hear about all it. All right, all right, you're, you're my kind of man right there. Good to know. All right. Um, you know, um, uh, a lot of stuff like about the fluoride in the water, a lot of, um, the, the wars at the time, I, I wasn't happy with like, uh, them continuing the war because, you know, at the time Obama was elected okay, and he was saying that he was going to shut down Guantanamo Bay. He was saying all sorts of, he was going to do all of this stuff and he never did it. Okay. So this had to have been between 2008 and 2016. Yeah, I released my second album on 2000 in 2011. It was on September 11, 2011. Wow. Okay, I remember that day well because I was doing. I did. A sh I I was doing my show in 2011 too, but that oh. was. But but in but in 2000 in 2011, um, that I believe that was a Sunday. That huh? pretty. Uh, that's the day. It might week. have been a Tuesday. What what September 11th of 2011? I don't know. You might know better than me. I don't know. Oh, well, no, I think I think it was a Sunday because uh, yeah, I mean, I because I, I remember. All right, well, never. It doesn't matter if I screwed it up. Yeah, I screwed it up. I'm trying. All right. Well, so what? So what? What was the name of the album that you released that day? Anyway, defending truth. Defending truth. Okay, and that sort of goes with protesting and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you uh, now? Have you ever done anything else? Like, have you ever done any acting or um or, or any like any any anything with sports stuff like that? Uh, no, no sports for me. Um, I was very terrible at sports as a kid. Okay, well, that's um, fine. But um, I did stand-up comedy for oh. a while in Denver, and I, I worked the road. I did Omaha, Nebraska, Manhattan, Kansas, uh, Wichita, Kansas. I did all that like six months on, but um, ever since I moved to New York City, like finding an open mic on Staten Island is very difficult. Okay, I would, I would know. I've never been there. Um, okay, I well, why did to get back to doing stand up though? I, I bet really you, would. I bet you'd be great. You, you have that great inflection for, for for comedy. Why did you move to Staten Island? My wife. Oh, okay. So you, so you, are you married and you have children? No, no children. No. Okay. Children. Just, well, I have a stepson. Well, okay, that's good. It frees you up for stuff though. That's good. Yeah, yeah. Is she, is she I'm music? very selfish. Like, I want to be able to do my comedy. I want to do my music. I want to, like, I don't need kids. No. No, I understand. But it's, you know, the good thing is, is that, is she, um, well, is she involved in, like, is she, is she comical too? Is she musical? Does she, and your wife is involved in that? In music, uh, in your she music? loves to sing and she is very funny, but no, she's a chef. Oh, okay. That's cool. So you, and, and yeah, you must be happy living there. I mean, I assume it might, I've never been there. It's it, what kind of a, it's it's kind of like working class, but it's quiet. Is that it? Yeah, Staten Island's a lot better than all the other boroughs, man. Oh, okay, yeah, I never I never knew that. Okay, a lot of people talk bad about Staten Island, but it's uh, you know yeah, it's working class. It's it's blue collar for the most part, and it's uh, it's it, there's a lot of less it's a lot less drama here than it is like in Brooklyn or Queens, you know? Right. I understand. Okay. Um, it's starting to change though, because everybody from Brooklyn and Queens is moving here. Oh, okay. So the population is, is gushing a little. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I did not, do you still perform t currently? I mean, music, you perform music in clubs now, or do you, are you doing any, any CDs like it currently or anything at all? Um, well, tell me you're working on have, something. Yeah, yeah, I, I am working on uh, putting together a new band. I have uh, my buddy, which I wanted to ask you if you have uh, how much do you have like a, a corner in your studio there where me and my buddy can come up and we can do like a duo performance for you? 
Absolutely. In fact, I have people, you know, my, I have such a wide sphere of influence at this TV station that the other, some of the other people that have shows have been asking me to get them guests. So if you're willing to travel to, north, to the town of northeastern Massachusetts, which is a beautiful area here, okay. come on ahead and perform. I bet I, you'd, be, you'd be more than welcome here. All right. Take a shuttle yeah, or something. I, yeah, because I was on the phone with him, like, as you were calling me earlier, and I, I was about to ask him, I was like, well, I guess he got the cold that everybody else has got that's going around, so, but uh, I, I was telling him, I was like, you know, we, we got to go up to, we got to go up to Massachusetts and uh, perform in this guy's studio, live. Okay. It's not my studio, but I, but I, but they do worship me here. Well, you can't really blame them, but I, I, I but I think, <laughs> I, but I mean, I mean, I, but they're all, we're all a team. We couldn't, I couldn't do what I do without the, the staff here. They're all great people. Yeah. And I guarantee you, if you come up here, there's a, it's, it's a, it's an awesome setup for musicians. We have, I call it the musicians platform. It's not, it's okay. a, it's sort of a, it's sort of an extension and it's sort of a, 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 a an elevation on the floor where yeah. I've actually had six, as many as six, people performing in a band on at once so if it's just oh. you guys yeah you'd like it i think it would be, it would be fun mm. and i'd be happy to you know meet you up here and tell you know and say so and so these two guys want to be on the sh on your show you want to get them on we'll have them on and then i'm sure they'd okay. love to have it that would be really cool okay yeah all right. So, what are you what are you currently working on? You said you had something else going on. What other projects? So yeah, like the buddy I wanted to bring up there. I'm actually uh, I'm working on because I had I had one drummer lined up, and then I had another drummer lined up, and then like I met two drummers out here on Staten Island that like now they're just too busy. I, I think they're they're busy with jobs, you know, because like, everything's rough right now. Yeah, I get it. But uh, my buddy, uh, my buddy Nick, like he's a guitarist, and his sister has electronic drums. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of telling him, like, yo, her, his sister doesn't play the drums. So I'm like, tell your sister, get those drums over to your house. We're gonna record an album, me and you. Great. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and and and, then, and you do now. Do you, what kind of studio? Do you have a studio? Is that your house right there where you're at? Where you're at now? Um, yeah, it, it's my apartment. I used to have a studio in Denver in my basement. Well, what do you? Well, yeah, but what do you use for a studio in Staten Island? This room. I oh, okay. got nothing, man. I got nothing. That's the problem. Oh, okay. Well, I gave up so much to move to Staten Island and marry my wife. <laughs> okay, well, she, obviously she's worth it. What about now? Your wife works as a chef. What is? She, what about possibly performing at the restaurant where she works? Oh no, it's assisted living. She works at the assisted oh. living that I, oh. I worked there for a while too, doing housekeeping. Yeah. Well, I, I guess I guess it's kind of a stretch to think that maybe elderly people that are involved in assisted that are, that are benefiting from assisted living would like the kind of music you guys play. Or, or what I you... mean, they they love me because I worked there and everything. I mean, they love me, but yeah, I don't think they're gonna go for my uh, my musical taste. <laughs> okay, uh, all right. Okay, well, I'm just just they, trying to give you for uh, things like Elvis and uh, you know, you know, stuff like that. They, they like the oldies. I know, I know how it is. My parents are in that age range too, and they're considering going into assisted living now in their high eighties. Um, right. Well, what about? But you don't perform in any clubs at, you know, on Staten Island now, currently, or anything like that. Not at the moment. We hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. Okay. Um, I mean, but how do you how do you promote yourself now? Uh, well, right now I, I'm doing uh, I'm doing my uh, my YouTube show. Okay. Well, what do you do? All right, yeah. What do you do? What do you do that out of? I, I do that on I do that out of this room. You oh, know? great. I just okay. Do it from my laptop on my bed, you know. And you just perform music on that, right? Well, I I do a little music. I haven't been doing music lately because I've been sick. So like you know, it's uh, yeah, yeah. singing doesn't really work too well. <laughs> what about now? Speaking of YouTube stuff, have you ever have you guys ever done a music video which we we which kind of tells a story? Mm, that's a good idea. I think I'm gonna need to. Uh, we're gonna need to workshop that, Harrison. Well, I'm glad you. I'm glad I suggested it because I I've been in a couple of music videos. They're awesome. I'll be if you okay. ever, if you want to come up here and, and do some footage for a music video. If I have time, I'll be happy to be part of it. Okay. Yeah, just you know, I mean, if you like, I said, I mean, if you're gonna come mm -hmm. up here and if you're gonna come up here and do a performance for someone's show, you might as well go all go all out and do other stuff too. If you if you can, yeah, there's plenty of room here. As much done as I can, right? Exactly, exactly. All right. Well, now that we're into the new year, I, I mean, are there any other projects that you got going on coming up? 
Uh, well, I, I, I did want to add um, my, my uh, I, I don't, like, I'm trying to figure out how it's easier to access uh, my uh, YouTube channel because when you type up in the air show, like, you get air shows over Long Island and stuff. So um, if people just want to go to at Kenneth Pogue on Twitter, then it's posted. It's it's uh, pinned to my uh, Twitter profile so they can find my channel there. Okay, that's good to know. We'll, we'll, we'll but uh, you... for the new year, um, I'm kind of revamping my channel. Um, I'm I'm writing a lot more music. I've been writing a lot of lyrics. I've been uh, coming up with song ideas. Um, I don't have any solid plans for the new year, but I I am planning on uh, giving up drinking for good. That's a good idea. Yes, uh, that's one thing that my channel is about. Um, I I do run a show. I started the, the whole idea of the channel. My main show that I came up with for the channel was um, addiction and subtraction. Wow, I love the t that's that, that's catchy, and I know it's about something important, but it's catchy. Yes, and that's what I liked about it. when I thought of that. I was like, oh my god, that's the perfect title. It is because you know you you're dealing with addiction but you need some subtraction in your life to I deal know, with that addiction. Don't I know it? I listen, I've been there too. I was in, I was not I was sort of a drug addict in my teen years and I gave that up cold okay. turkey. Not drink drink yeah. I can I could never become an alcoholic because I my, I really hated the taste of it. It doesn't mean I didn't get plastered yeah. every now and then, but I okay, but right. it was but I, but it was not something that I, that was going to keep me that was not something I'd be doing every day because it's, it made me feel like right. crap so I stopped so I didn't have to worry about it. Smoking well, weed, on the other so hand, drinking was, drinking wasn't your thing. Drinking wasn't my thing, but smoking weed was, and I have asthma, and I had to, and I and I and my ah, doctor. You got to give that up then. <laughs> right, I did. I did gave it up forty five years ago, nineteen on September second, nineteen seventy nine. It was the day before Labor Day. Nice. All right, listen, All right. we're down to the final five minutes of the show. I hope you had fun talking okay. to me. Oh, I did. Okay, um, so if, before we wrap it up, you give you want to give some shouts out to people that are going to see the show. Just just condense them, and then we'll finish it up with my snapping. Oh, well. You can start with your you, wife, you, I suppose. Yeah, let's give a shout out to my wife, my uh, my lovely family, um, my guitar back here, Leslie. She's a lovely beast over here. Okay. Um, Connor McGregor back here on the thing. The, the, the quote on the poster, you can't, on the, the print, it says, success isn't the result of arrogance, it's the result of belief. Oh, beautiful! He's you and you and you ought to perform something at his one of his matches. <laughs> was, all right, well that's great. Um, so yeah, if you had a good, it, man. well that's fine. If you had a good time with me, what I'd like you to do is pass the word along about topic time to your friends, anybody that you thought might think might be an interesting guest. Then uh, you got my digits. Have them text me, call me. We'll get them on as the show, either by Zoom or in person. Absolutely. And let me know if you and, and let me know if you need. When you, if you're planning on coming up here and possibly doing doing some sh doing a performance on someone else's show here, let me know and I'll give you directions. I'll give you the, the oh, address. I'll be coming up there. Don't That's, you worry, sir. No, I'm I'm looking forward to it. All I'm right, excited so, for this idea. I'm glad. Me too. All right, now I, one last favor. After we wrap the show up, would you stick around and my tech guy will take a pic for Facebook and I'll tag you in it. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right, folks. We're wrapping up topic time for today. Uh, another great show on the you know in the books, and we're gonna have another one next week. Take care. See you then. Signing off and rolling out.